Well, hello there. I'm going to walk you through for chapter 11. I'm going to walk you through uh, our Titanic preparation outline example that's posted in Canvas for you to look at and to follow. Uh, please make your preparation outline look like this one. So in this video, I'm going to review it and walk through it to so point out different things so that you can do your preparation outline like this one. Now, please distinguish between your preparation outline, as we see here, versus your speaking outline, which is the one you will actually use in presenting your speech. Please don't use the same outline. It's the wrong tool for the job. This one has too much. And the more you have in front of you, the more likely you will be to read it. So don't do that. Okay. So first thing we want to do is to talk about what is here and why it is where it is. So this actually should be called an example of informative speech preparation outline because that makes it a little bit confusing with speaking outline. And as I said, those aren't the same things. So I, I will change that for my next classes. Sorry about that. So we have the title here, which makes sense right at the beginning. And then we have these two items, your specific purpose and your central idea. Now, these two, you have already worked with them in your uh, rough outline, which has your specific purpose, central idea, the topic of your speech, and your main points. The purpose is to serve as kind of a warm up for now developing your uh, preparation outline. These two items will never show up in your speech specifically, although in a sense they, they appear through the whole thing. But the specific purpose is to help you, logically they're here at the very beginning, in a sense before we even get into the outline itself, to help you get your brain wrapped around exactly what you're trying to accomplish. Specific purpose you're trying to accomplish to inform my audience about. Now, you could write this as simple as to inform my audience about the Titanic. This other line about one of the most famous tragedies in history, it's not hurting anything, but it, it's not necessary. So to inform my audience about shipping containers, to inform my audience about the Pony Express, to inform my audience about the Green Sea Turtle. What is your topic? And pre preview it, precede it by to inform my audience about. And we write it that way to, in an infinitive sentence for a purpose. Some of you have sent suggestions to say, you know, redo your specific purpose to include it to say to inform my audience about. I know it sounds nitpicky, but it is helpful. Then the central idea is to, to help you get the whole speech out in front of you in a one sentence summary uh, from the disaster to the movie, those are going to be two of the main points right there. Uh, the sinking of the Titanic remains one of the most famous tragedies in history. Not bad, however. The, it doesn't really discuss what's going to be their first main point, which is kind of the background of the ship, the history of the ship, the building of the ship, the design of the ship. So it should say something like, from its design to the disaster, to the movie. Those are the three main points. So include your main points. They should be reflected in your central idea sentence. This is an infinitive, which begins with a two to inform. This is an indicative sentence. It's just a regular, typical statement sentence. I went to the store is an indicative statement. Go to the store as a command is an imperative statement. Uh, um, and then there's a question, was an inquisitive sentence is, did you go to the store? So we have these different types of sentences for this is an indicative and this is an infinitive. Okay, then we come to the outline itself. A few things. First of all, we have our three main topics that break the speech into its three main sections of introduction. Notice the title here is, is very clear in bold, it's centered. No numbering, and it stands alone to introduce this portion. 
We go down a little bit further. There's the body. Bold, centered, not numbered. And then finally, way down here, whoop, I passed it, sorry, is the conclusion. Centered, bold, not numbered. Those break apart the speech into its three sentences. It's not here, but, but if we had our references page, it would be right after this on its own separate page. And it also is centered in bold uh, and not numbered. Okay, let's flip back here to the top. Uh, also notice we, we use a system of symbolization that lays out the speech and is logical in and of itself. So the way our numbering works is, uh, I'm going to flip down here so we can get all levels shown. I think it is right. Whoop, I passed it. There we go. So Roman numeral, this is the second main point, but they're all the same. Roman numeral, capital, letter, Arabic numerals, what are called Arabic numerals, and then uh, lowercase letters. And that gives you four levels. If you notice, even looking at the outline, even if you didn't read a word, we see what's more important and less important or more detailed based on where it goes in the numbering system. Left margin all the way, and then it indents. So by indenting and the numbering, we know what is a bigger point versus a more minor point. So we want to number correctly and indent correctly. Uh, also, I want to show you right here, transitions. Notice transitions go between the intro and the first main point. It really kind of goes between the main point, not the, you know, body is here, but we're starting the body. But it really is going between these two. And notice how the numbering starts over at each main point. See, it starts over here with Roman letters. Starts over here with Roman numerals here again. Uh, second main point starts over again. Third main point starts over again. And in the conclusion, it starts over again. And notice the transitions are not numbered, just as the section titles are not numbered. And then one more thing about transitions. Uh, we talked about them in Chapter 9. Notice there is no transition here between the last main point, which in this speech is the third main point, and the conclusion, because this in conclusion kind of works as our transition. There's not a real full transition because we don't have another main point coming up. You might have said in to wrap things up or uh, to bring things to a close, something different, but there's our, for lack of a better term, our semi sort of uh, conclusion. Okay, so do you see how it is all laid out logically and beneficially to the viewer? Uh, but then also when you're speaking, you're going to follow the same pattern. Okay. So here we have our first main point in the introduction. And we've talked about this before, get our attention. Second thing is, uh, now notice they, they carry their central idea here as they're uh, introducing their subject. Here is their research statement. I've been fascinated uh, and I've read and studied. I'm looking for that word research. Uh, there, oh, there it is. Research on the internet. Okay, but research over is well, that's all research. And then here is their preview. Uh, I will discuss the Titanic itself. Second, the sinking of the ship, and finally the movie about the Titanic. And then a transition, and then into the first main point. Let's talk for a moment about the uh, inline citations or the in-text citations. Remember, we talked about having four items. Who said it, where they said it, when they said it, and what they said. Uh, who said it? George, Jeff Tibbles. Uh, when he said it, 1997 in his book. And then the title of the book says, where he said it. And then what did he say, quote or paraphrase? Here's a paraphrase. 
There it is. Then right away, this author has a second one, uh, another book. So where are they set it? Notice it doesn't have to be in that same order, but you're going to want to have those four items. Where he set it, when he set it, who said it was Thresh. I would like to see his last name there. And then what did he say? Again, a paraphrase. Here's another one. Notice how he has quite a few in a row here. Where they said it, Shipbuilders Magazine, uh, Peter Thresh. I would like to see that earlier. But anyway, when he said it and um, a quote instead of a paraphrase, what he said right there. Now, I want to mention one thing here. I wanted you to notice the difference between the Shipbuilders Magazine and uh, the, um, well, they don't have it here. Anyway, Shipbuilders Magazine is in a quote, is in italics. Book titles are in italics. Album titles are in italics. The way the MLA uh, describes it is, the, the concept of containers and what is contained in the containers. Containers are books, magazines, journals, uh, uh, um, 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 albums. Those are all containers. They get italicized. Articles, chapters, songs, those are all items that are contained in the container. And what gets contained is par, uh, par, in, in uh, quotation marks. That's the big difference. So don't put articles in italics. Articles go in quotation marks because they are contained within the container of a journal. Also, nothing gets both italics and quotations. They get one or the other. So anyway, that might hopefully that helps you with that. Okay, so let's see if there's anything else here I want to point out to you. Again, you're going to make yours look like this one. Full sentences, nothing in with bullet points, nothing in lists, uh, nothing in partial sentences, nothing at the end of a sentence, for example, on an uh, inline citation. Notice there's nothing in parentheses at the end. It's, everything's included in the sentence itself because we want to write it just as we say it because this outline reflects a verbal slash spoken slash presented uh, presentation, which is a speech. So we write it as we would say it. In, an, in a journal, in an article, you might put items in parentheses at the end of a sentence for your research reference, but we don't do that here. Okay, so that's the body. Notice everything's single-spaced here. I think I said double-spaced. I don't have a, a fit either way. Um, I probably just should clarify that, but that's not that big of a deal. Okay, one other thing I'll mention, go through in the conclusion uh, here's your review that we talked about. Here's in conclusion, I have discussed, and they go review the speech again, and then they leave us with something memorable about this quotation or this reference. The story written 14 years before the disaster, which now seems as if it were an eerie prophecy um, or a case of life imitating art. That's their memorable part of that. So you're going to end with something memorable. Okay, I think that's all I want to cover in this chapter. Use the examples to help you create yours. If you get yours done early, you can send it to me. I will review it, send you back with suggestions so that you can get a better a score on your speech. Okay, that's that.